This is Lehigh Valley Political Pulse. I'm Tom Shortell. Each week, political scientist Chris Boric joins me to discuss the latest scientific-based research related to public opinion. We dive into the local, state, and national levels and what it all means for you. Politicians have long co-opted media to reach large audiences. Richard Nixon was on Laughing. Arnold Schwarzenegger announced his gubernatorial campaign on Leno. Jimmy Fallon memorably fluffed Donald Trump's hair in 2016. Chris, why do politicians make these appearances? Tom, it's all about political communications and reaching your audiences, finding your audience where they're at, delivering messages in those venues that resonate with those audiences. And of course, as listeners would would know, um, over time, our communication methods have changed and evolved in lots of ways. So the, the media landscape, the communication landscape is much different in 2024 with a variety of, of outlets from podcasts to social media to traditional uh, broadcast uh, television and cable television. And so you, you find the, the venue that meets the candidate's qualities, the audience qualities, and the message. And so you can go from from laughing in the 60s, trying to reach a national audience on a, on a cutting-edge show, to a podcast today that might reach a very specific, detailed audience. In the last few days, there's been conversation about whether Harris uh, will or won't make an appearance on the Joe Rogan experience. That is the world's most popular podcast at the moment. Uh, if you were advising a presidential campaign, what would you recommend? Yeah, Joe Rogan, as she said, is incredibly popular, especially with young males. And so if you're Kamala Harris and you're looking at a weak spot, perhaps, in your coalition, younger voters tend to go Democratic. But if you look this year, there's a significant gender gap um, among younger uh, voters in the country with males um, less supportive of her candidacy than past Democrats. And you're thinking, how could I get there? How could I get a message to them? Maybe you roll the dice uh, on, a, on a show like Joe Rogan. I would imagine, if I probably if I was advising her, and of course I'm not, <laughs> um, I would probably tell her to do it. Trump may owe his political career to reality TV, but he seems to be more focused, at least right now, on traditional campaign events. What's the value of that type of retail politics versus the bigger audience that a major media event could bring you? Yeah, he's, you know, and and that's one thing about former President Trump. He is the product of his generation, right? He's still TV-focused in in a lot of ways. Um, Of course, you could say, well, he's embraced X, Twitter, right, in a a historic way. Um, but, But largely... When he thinks about media, I think he thinks TV um, from his experience, his background, his age. Everything tells him to go in that direction. So he looks at things that might appear good on TV for him. How He's, he's, he's consummately interested in those images. Um, so he thinks, well, the news is going to pick this up, right? You're, you're working at the, a drive through at, <laughs> at a McDonald's. Yeah, that's going to get aired, right, on on the news. And he'll, he'll get picked up and he's image conscious and thinks it'll, it'll look – uh, that way, and he's he's very much focused on on that type of, of of approach. It's who he is. It's it's how he views um, politics, um, and it's worked for him career wise. And I mean, he's the major he's a major party. He's a major candidate and for a major party. He's already been president. Is it wrong to be thinking that way? Does he need to adapt with the times? You think? You know, it, it, from a career-wise perspective, he's he's succeeded greatly using that. The the audiences have changed, right? Who you're reaching and finding these avenues to go on podcast or looking at social media. Um, you will see. This is one of the interesting things, um, Tom. In this cycle, is is a little bit of an experiment on differing styles, right? And from things to uh, getting out the vote. Um, Harris has a very different model than than Trump does. Communication styles, I think, you know, outlets, very different styles. So one of the things besides, of course, the outcome, which has meaning for all of us, is from a political perspective, campaign perspective, are we going to see some things celebrated and heralded as part of this campaign that are going to be with us? Others that say, okay, you know, they were behind the times or they picked a strategy that didn't evolve with the era. And that's part of the story. That's Muhlenberg College political science professor Chris Boric. This has been Lehigh Valley Political Pulse. I'm Tom Shortell. For an extended version of this interview, visit lehighvalleynews.com.